Hello. Um, I haven't done a video for a while. I had my arm broken for me. And so I've just come out of the cast and I thought I'd throw together a recipe for you. I'm, I've been spending a lot of time with my father and we've been talking about um, Dutch recipes. And this is a Dutch spice cake. So the Dutch had a lot of contact with um, the spice route because of all their shipping and everything else. So I'm going to make this with a whole range of spices which are just really yummy. Okay, so we need, what's with the two litre pint cake tin? Good grief, okay. So we're going to get a cake tin and grease it and coat it with breadcrumbs. Something a bit different, and we'll start with that. Now this cake looks like a domed shape. I'm actually going to make a square one because to me it's just more practical for cutting and if it gets a bit dry you can always butter it, slice it, butter it much easier. So let's start. You can probably tell I've changed into my gym jams because we were gardening earlier and it rained and I got very wet. So I had a hot shower and changed in my jammies and then I thought, oh, I might do some baking. So, yeah, let's cut a whack of butter out of this. And I'll pop the oven on. Okay, let's grease this pan. Now, it was my right uh, radius that broke, the top of it snapped off. So, I'm using my right hand, but it Especially on a day when I've been gardening, it's just still very sore and it actually set crooked. So I'm sure other things will happen, but at the moment it's just, as my brother would say, suck it up princess and get on with life and we'll see what happens in the future. So. I'm sorry I can't give you a slice of this brother dearest in Adelaide, but if it sounds good to you, I can make it when you come over next time, probably January. The great thing is our house is beautiful and cool during the summer, so baking is not an issue if the weather gets a bit warmer. Okay, I have become multi-skilled with my left hand. I can even write with my left hand now after six weeks. Um, so there's so many things I can now do with my left hand that I couldn't before. I can even cut with scissors, right-handed scissors with my left hand. That's ready to go. Next, we're sifting together some ingredients. So, bowl. In this bowl, we are putting, let's see, two, oh, five cups of plain flour. Wow, large cake. Okay. Oh, actually, I'll use this one. Okay, five cups. Let's do this accurately as baking is a chemical process. Five. Okay, now next, baking powder. We'll put the flour in here and then sift it into the bigger bowl. Let's get some spices together. We need salt, we need cinnamon, allspice, cloves, nutmeg, cardamom. We'll start with some flour in there. And put the baking powder through it. Okay, so how much baking powder do we need? Four teaspoons. Is this a teaspoon? Oops, sorry. That is a teaspoon. <laughs> there are some things that are really hard to do 
left-handed. It's going in different directions that I'm struggling with. Okay. Now, so, I'm sorry, I forgot. Four teaspoons, okay. One, you see what I mean? I've just really got to think this through. One, two, three, and four. Okay, so I'm going to do this left-handed. Luckily, the sifter doesn't mind. It just doesn't feel comfortable in my left hand. I'm still, I've had to make do for six weeks, seven weeks tomorrow since it was broken. So, this is why I usually don't bother sifting. I should, and there are actually lumps in this flour, so it makes all the more sense to do it. Okay, let's pile a whole lot more in and get these spices happening. Okay, so we need uh, one and a half cups of mas muscovado sugar. Oh, okay, the heavy sugar. Right, um, two teaspoons of cinnamon. I love the smell of cinnamon. It's in so many recipes. Cinnamon and apples. One big favorite of mine. Okay. I know there's lots of clanging and clashing and stuff, but that's because of my hand, so I apologise ahead of time. Ground allspice. No, there we go. See what I mean? No. Okay, allspice. Cloves. Order a teaspoon of cloves. Nutmeg, half a teaspoon of nutmeg or nut muscat. I've actually got a grater, but at the moment um, I, I really couldn't handle that. At the end of the day, it's, it's a bit painful. And a quarter of cardamom. Now combining these, that's a quarter, combining these and then um, sifting it is going to really spread this around. It's going to be yummy delish. Yummy delish. Good use of English. Okay, here we go. And if you can see that, it's all starting to combine through. So from now on in, it'll be the... Um, just plain flour here. It's going to take forever. But it's just going to get those lumps out and add that extra layer of fluffiness. It's really strange. I, I remember using a sifter um, in home ec back in the day at high school. And this has got an extra that had a blade that sort of went backwards and forwards. This has got something different and I'm, I don't like it as much. It doesn't seem to react as quickly. Now I'm just going to stir the baking powder and the spices through all of this. I am getting rid of that sifter. I'll see if I can get a better one. That was terrible. I'd rather do it with a sieve, I think, than that. Okay. Now we need the sugar. Here we go, one and a half. Okay, pop this out of the way for the moment. And that container will have to be relieved of its sugar. Ow. 
at a future date. Right. Let's put all these over there. Now, let's stir this through. So we are mixing through the sugar with the flour and the spices and the baking powder. And after we have done that, oh, okay. This will be interesting. Now, because I'm one of these people who has a child with um, lactose, lactose intolerance, I tend to use it all lactose free milk all the time now. And I have as yet not found an issue with using it in my baking. So I'm quite pleased with that because my tummy tends to feel better with lactose free milk as well. Okay, so we need two cups of milk. But it depends on the consistency of the batter because this is more like a batter than a cake mix. Um, all right, let's pop the two cups in. Where are we? Cups, cups, cups. There's two cups. Okay. Whoops. Good old whisk. So let's just make sure everything is, yes, everything's gone through. Oh, and there's a lump of brown sugar. Oh, oh. Yep. The right arm is not going to be impressed, I think. Okay. Let's start stirring this through. Now the idea is it cooks at a very low temperature, so I'm going to turn the oven down in a second. No, oh, I did forget the salt. Oops, let me throw some in. Throw in some salt. So there's no eggs, there's no butter, it's just flour, spices, sugar and milk. And I'm also going to use an electric appliance because this is not going to work for me. It's creating hassles. For any of you that are challenged all the time like this, you have my deepest sympathy. Um, I'd love to come over and give you a hand. This is tricky. Thank goodness my husband, when designing my lovely kitchen, said you are definitely having PowerPoints everywhere. Very, very logical. I feel like I've really cheated using a machine. Let's get this out of here. Make sure everything is stirred through. Stir it all through, check through to the bottom to make sure there's not huge clumps of flour. That's more like it. It actually ended up taking three cups of milk. So we'll see how this turns out. This will be interesting. Would have been better to do a hand beater, but I don't think my hand could ha cope with that at the moment. My hand could handle it. Excellent use of the English language today. Okay, so, all right, we're going to pour that into the breadcrumb the greased bread crumbed cake tin. Oh, turn the oven down before I forget and it starts to burn the second it hits it. So it's going in at 150 for an hour and a half. So it should be good to come out at 7.30 tonight. Pour this all in. I actually think this would go really well in my Kenwood mixer. I think the mixing would get rid of the lumps. So I think I might try that next time. 
just to see if it makes a difference. Okay, now pop this over here. As I always do, I shake and bang it a bit. I'm going to pop it in for an hour and a half. Fingers crossed. Now I probably should have turned it around halfway through because it's risen on one side, you can see, and the other side's a bit flatter. Don't know, the oven. Um, it's, I'm not doing the sticking the peg, pick in the cake test because it's pulled away from the sides. The whole thing is loose. So I'm just going to turn it over onto this cooling tray. Baking tray, you know what I mean. <laughs> ah. Okay, now apparently it improves with age. So they recommend wrapping it up tightly once it's cool and leaving it for a couple of days and then slicing and eating it. I would feel this would benefit with a bit of butter, but um, I will put a comment after it at the end to let you know how it turns out. This is the Dutch spice cake. I hope you like it. Keep watching and make sure you um, watch his nibs for more interesting videos.